Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you look down over here, you can see the little black cat. She's making a rare appearance. That's Foo Foo. Anyway, hi everyone, welcome back. Today I do have a few things I want to talk about. Number one, we're going to touch base on what I've been doing to change things up so that my sales improve, especially on Posh US. April was really bad. May was not that much better. I did a few things and I think I can see an improvement. So I want to share with you what I've been doing. I also want to touch base a little bit with some posh support things that I've noticed over the last little while, good and bad. And a couple of things at the end about uh, my pet peeve as being a buyer. That's what I want to talk about. So today, first and foremost, because it is the most important topic, is what am I doing? What am I changing? in order to improve my sales. So I've mentioned to you before, Posh US has absolutely tanked for me. April was not good. I think I might have did $300 maybe, which is ridiculously low for me. Um, May was not that much better and I'm hoping that the things I'm doing has changed that. So what have I done? First thing is I made a sale, I believe it was on Thursday last week, and I couldn't print the label because they wanted me to verify my ID. So if you've been around, you know, any of the Facebook groups or anything, you know that Posh US is asking people to basically prove who they are. And as a Canadian selling on, you know, Posh US, it's a little bit of a different process for me. So, <coughs> excuse me. I wasn't worried about it. I knew it was probably going to happen. I knew what to do because lots of people have been talking about it. Um, so anyway, I did everything I had to do. I could print my labels come Friday afternoon. Didn't take very long. I was really happy with that. But I'm wondering in the back of my head if work, you know, sort of working up to being told to verify if maybe they suppressed my listings a little bit. Now, before you think, oh, Leanna, you know, that's conspiracy theory, you know, that doesn't happen. I just want to sort of really put into your brains that I do the same things. I, I, I list the same, I list the same items, um, I share, I do all the things I'm supposed to do. So there really wasn't a lot of rhyme and reason to why my sales were so, so bad. But we're going to get to that in a second. Because you know what? I've been doing this for five years. It's not like all of a sudden... I decided that I'm going to source out really bad items that nobody wants. That's not going to happen. Yeah, I get the odd bad buy, but for the most part, I know what I'm doing. So my sales should be at least a little bit consistent, even though, you know, the economy and everything else is in there. So maybe a little bit of conspiracy, but I did notice that once I was done all that process, that my activity went up in my closet. And you know what, my sales were okay. They're not fantastic, but they were better over the weekend, which was a long weekend too. So that was really interesting. But I also did other things with that because you know what, I decided that even though I do all the same things all the time and I'm very consistent and I'm, I have my routine, I realized that you know what, the algorithm gets bored, right? I've talked about this before, about the algorithm being a big lake, a nice calm lake, and you want to put as many stones in as you can, and you want to put them in different places so the algorithm keeps going clicking because it keeps guessing what you're doing. And maybe that's what happened too, is that I just became complacent, and I just kept doing the same things, listing the same amount of items, listing at the same time of day, uh, sharing at the same time of day, you know, doing all those kinds of things. So... I did something a little radical on the weekend. I think it started Friday actually is I turned off my automation on my Posh US closet. I turned off my shares and I turned off my offers. I kept my relists going and my share backs because I just, I don't like sharing. I just, I like it automated. I really do love my automation, but I decided I wanted to change things up. So I did start sharing manually. And just as, you know, just so you know, it's a pain in the butt. Sharing your closet is the bane of my existence. I dislike it immensely, but I did it. You know, I shared five, six times a day, which is not bad. Not bad. Um, I think I have 
just under 700 listings. So let's do that math. I got to do the math. I should have done the math before, but you know me. Okay, so say let's, I think it's there's 680 listings and I shared it. We're going to say five times just to keep it low. 3,400 shares that I did manually Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I did a couple of shares this morning. Posh Sidekick for like a dollar a day US shares 9,000 times, you know, so it's well worth the money. And there's no way I could keep up that pace. So anyway, I shared manually. And I noticed that when I would share, there would be a lot of activity afterwards, you know, like my notifications would go up, people were liking items, people were sharing items. I had questions this weekend. There was a lot more activity on the account. So that was really cool. I also sent out offers. Um, when somebody liked something, I would send out an offer. I went through, I think Saturday morning and I sent out 25% offers, I think it was, 27, no, 27%. That didn't get me a lot of sales, but again, lots of activity. Like I noticed a ton more activity on my account, which is really, really what I want to have happen. Now, today was Monday because of the way the week is going. I actually did the London run today. So I drove to London for the cross border shipper. I turned my automation back on because I just don't have the time today to sit here and do it and do it and do it. And yeah, but I will once in a while, I think I will turn it off, share it manually for a day, turn it back on just to keep the algorithm guessing. So I started doing that, started sharing myself, started sending out offers and things seem to be looking up on Posh US. Posh Canada is fine, so I don't know what is going on. I don't know if it was that I had to be verified. I don't know if it's a combination of a whole bunch of things, but at the end of the day, if your sales are slow, and you know that you haven't you know, had a brain fart and started buying all the bad things that you shouldn't be buying, you know what, try something different, try sharing manually, try listing at a different time, try, you know, listing different, um, maybe in a different category, even just change it up a bit, your timing, the amount that you're doing, whatever, just to see if it gives you a little bit of a boost. Cause that's what I found. Another thing that I'm doing because I've kept my relisting on, on Posh Psychic and that way they relist and it's, you know, I've actually set it for 60 days. So they're new listings. And I'm going in every morning and I am tweaking those listings. I am double checking the price, the listing price to make sure that it's still viable, whether it needs to be raised or lowered. I am switching up the title, changing the keywords, changing the, the order of the words. Um, I'm adding different keywords if I can, changing the photographs around if I can, just to tweak it a little bit, just to make it that little bit different. So we're going to see <laughs> what happens. Like I said, the activity was a bit better over the weekend. So I was really happy with that. We'll see if it keeps up and hopefully summer slowdown won't be too slow this year because I can't get very much slower than I have been for April and May. So fingers crossed, we'll see what happens. And I'll just keep doing things a little bit differently every once in a while, just to keep that algorithm guessing. Okay. Talking about support. When I had to verify my my ID or my person, I didn't even know how to say that. There was a way you did it on the app and I didn't realize that because I was on my computer when it happened. And I just misread it. So I actually emailed support to say, hey, what does this mean? What do I do? They got back to me. That email from Posh Support actually got back to me within a couple of hours. Fantastic. But by the time all that was sort of said and done, I realized I had to be on the app to do something and it got dealt with there. And I have to say the whole process barely took 24 hours. So I was really, really happy with that. Very happy with Posh US support over the, over that sort of process. <coughs> However, <laughs> Posh Canada, I emailed Posh Canada well over a week ago. Posh Support Canada, um, well over a week ago to ask a question about somebody's listing because somebody has a listing that is 
saying, follow me on Instagram, I do sales, or you know, they, they have a website, go to this website, but you can't report the listing because the listing is not for sale, so I couldn't find a way to report it because it's taking stuff off of Poshmark and putting it on another platform. So I asked about that, I go, is this allowed? Like, how do I report this and blah, blah, blah. Nothing. I got one email back about four days later to say, hey, we haven't forgot about you, but it's now been well over a week and I think they forgot about me. <laughs> and I mean, it is not a hugely important question. It's just, where's the support? Where's the answer to my question? It does make me feel good. <coughs> I got a tickle. It's been raining like crazy here today, and I think it's just kicked up a whole bunch of stuff. So Posh Canada support, I'm not happy with it at all. But again, it's not an important question. It's not like I couldn't print my labels like, oh my God. So it wasn't something like that. So that's all right. <coughs> so sorry. Okay, so my pet peeve as a buyer, I am sort of on the hunt right now we have a wedding coming up in august to go to and my neighbor is cutting a tree if you can hear that i apologize they're making noise today it is what it is anyway we have a wedding that we're going to in august and i'm looking for a dress because you know what i don't really have a ton of wedding dresses you know i don't have something where to fancy places and that's fine i'm looking I have liked several items and received absolutely no communication from the seller, no offer, no nothing, which, okay, I prefer a seller to be proactive and send me an offer. I've actually had a seller say, hey, glad you liked the item, send me an offer, which was like a huge turnoff for me because I don't want to do the work. I want you to tell me what you want me to pay. You give me an offer first. Let's deal with it that way. It was just a small pet peeve. I think if somebody likes an item, I think as a seller, you should be proactive and you should be sending out offers. I know that the majority of my sales are made with offers to likers. So as a buyer, I don't really like them not sending me an offer. So what I did is I went back in and I unliked and liked the item again. <laughs> just to see if that would kick them into making an offer. And one of them did send me an offer, so I was really happy with that. But I don't know. I don't know what I want to buy. I'm still sort of sitting on the fence about what I want to wear. And it's just, I don't know. Part of me wants to thrift the, the dress anyway because I want to be able to see it and feel it and all that stuff, so I'm not sure. But as a, as a buyer, please send out offers. I think it's really important to be proactive and to send out those offers, I think you get a lot more sales that way. Anyway, that is it. A um, couple things. No, not a couple things. I think it's really only one thing. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I'm kind of excited about this one. So today is Monday, and you know it's not my normal day to upload, but I am uploading this today. Things are changing up in June for the channel. I am going to be doing a daily vlog all in June. This is the goal. The goal is to do a video every single day, shorter videos, you know, five minutes kind of thing. I am going to share with you my to-do lists and I will be held accountable because the next day I'm going to tell you whether or not I did what I had to do. I thought this would be a really good sort of way to give a glimpse, a small glimpse into the life of someone who sells full time. This is my only income and I want to share with you some of the things I do for my business, how I get there, what I do. I'm going to be doing some what sold yesterdays and some mini hauls and once in a while maybe a longer video will go in but for the most part it's going to be a small shorter video every single day is the plan. You're going to get me just out of bed because you know what? I'm just going to give you raw stuff. You're going to get me right out of the gym when I'm going to be a sweaty hot mess because, you know, that's what happens. You're going to get me, you know what, like you normally do too. So it's okay. Anyway, that is what's happening in June. It's going to start on Saturday and we're going to go from there. I hope everybody has a fantastic week. It is the end of the month coming up and we're heading into June 
very exciting. I like summer and I'm looking forward to it. So everybody have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.